What I'd like to do is to show you some more of the weather features. I'm going to turn on the ceiling layer. I used to live in Kansas City, so I type in MCI. And let's see what's happening over there. All right, let's turn on the visibility layer. Looks like not a lot happening on the ceilings. So here we can see that the, that the visibility is 10 plus miles. I can turn on precip. I can turn on things like sky conditions. Lots of different things to turn on. Okay, I'm going to turn some of those off. Because the really fun part about weather usually is what happens about different altitudes, different times, weather changes. So the difference between this product and every other flight planner I've ever seen, I haven't shown you yet. What I'm going to show you is the way that it treats weather. Weather isn't two-dimensional. It's not even really three-dimensional. Weather is four-dimensional, meaning it changes based on altitude, on lateral location, and on time. And that's what this product really focuses on. So let's talk about that. I'm going to turn, I'm going to zoom the map out. Let's turn off the TFRs. We don't really need them right now. Zoom the map out a little bit. Takes the map a second to refresh. I'm going to switch this to the road layer though. It makes it a little bit easier to see things like political boundaries and things like that. All right. So now we're looking at the entire country. I'm going to turn off, turn on the winds aloft layer. And let's take a look at this. Now, you see arrows. We're zoomed far out, so we can't really tell you um, from this distance. We can't put little numbers on the screen telling you how strong the wind is. We do not use wind barbs because it's just too confusing. So instead, we use colors. A red is something over 40 knots. The green is 20 knots or below, and the orange are in the middle. But of course, the winds change depending on your altitude. So you notice there's an altitude slider next to the layers box. Right now, it's at 6,000, telling you that the winds you're looking at are at 6,000 feet. I'm going to set it to 12,000. Notice that the winds change, maybe at 18, at 30,000. Pretty strong winds today. Down to 9,000 feet, back down to 6,000. So here, that's how you can set how you want to look at the winds at different altitudes. I'm going to zoom in just to show you what you get when you zoom in enough. As you zoom in a little more, Now, instead of just seeing the arrow, you know that the winds are 28 knots heading to the southeast. That level of detail doesn't work unless you're zoomed in pretty tightly like this. So I'm going to zoom back out again, and you'll see that that disappears. And you just get the colors. So what you can do here is you can turn on the AirMet and SigMet layer. I'm going to turn this off now. Now, AirMets and SigMet also vary by altitude, right? So if you're flying at 30,000 feet, you get a whole different uh, issue with air mets and sig mets than you do if you're at 6,000. So again, the altitude slider takes into this into account. So these are all of our air mets and sig mets at 6,000 or 9,000 or 12. Let's try 24,000 feet. We miss, see some of them go away at 30,000 feet. If you want to see detail about them, you just click. And there you go. Very easy to see. Convective sig met, I'll click on another one. Another convective, looks like we have a lot of convective today. Some turbulence, okay, more convective, okay, more turbulence. So very, very easy, just a single click gets you that information, and it's based on that. You know what, though? The thing about weather, like I said, is it's not just based on altitude, it's based on time. You may have noticed down the bottom of the screen that there's a timeline. I haven't used it yet. Let's take a look at that. So right now, the time, it's a little bit past four o'clock right now in Seattle. So the time marker down the bottom of the screen here, it says it's about four o'clock right now. So this is telling me that the airmets and segments at about 415 at 30,000 feet look like that. Let's try changing it into the future. So move forward to maybe seven o'clock tonight, maybe 630. So it looks like at about 630, most of the airmets and segments have gone away. The ones that are left are things like mountain obscuration or turbulence, okay? So you can take, and that's at 30,000 feet. So maybe at 6.30 tonight, if I had a flight and I was flying at maybe 12,000 feet, ah, see, quite a bit different. So 12,000 feet at 6.30 has quite a lot more things to worry about. Looks like over the lake, uh, over Lake Michigan, you have a lot of turbulence and so on. Let's pull up winds, too. Winds, of course, change like that, too. So I'm going to take off. You can keep these on at the same time, but I'm, for simplicity, I'm going to turn off the airmets and sigmets 
and just turn on the winds. So at 6.30 p.m. on the timeline, at 12,000 feet, that's what the winds are supposed to look like. Maybe make it 18, now let's make it nine. And let's change the time. I can grab that slider and move it forward. So now this is at about 9.45, around midnight. Bring it way forward to tomorrow morning. The winds have changed considerably. The winds, it looks like in the center of the country, are heading primarily south. Well, if I move it back to the current timeline at about 6.30, the winds are a lot more hitting from the west to the east. Okay, so once again, you can use four-dimensional planning. So we're looking at nine o'clock in the morning at maybe 24,000 feet, at 34,000 feet, at 6,000, whatever it may be. You can look at the winds, you can look at the airmets and sigmets, however you like, based on the time and on the altitude. Not just those, though. Let's turn on the METARs and the TAFs. So in the METAR and the TAF layer, which, by the way, you can get at through a single TAF now, which is kind of handy. So in the METAR and TAF layer, those are also color-coded. So the METARs and the TAFs, a green is good, red is bad. So let's go back to our current time. So right now, notice that there's a lot of dots on the screen. That's because, let me just remind you of this. This is not called the METAR layer. It's called the METAR and TAF layer. So what we do is, based on the current time, or rather the time that you select on the time slider, we show you either a METAR, if it's within the next hour or so, or we show you how the weather will change based on what's expected in the TAF. Okay? So right now we're looking at the time from 4.30. So there are a lot more METARs in the country than there are TAFs because METARs tend to be automated. TAFs require a human being, a meteorologist, to interpret the data. So most airports don't have them, as you know. If you take a look, it looks like in California down the west coast, uh, there's some red dots right now. Red meaning, I can just hover over that, that it's IFR conditions. Let's move the time slider though forward. Let's see how things change in the next hour or so. So instead of four o'clock, I'll make it say 5.30. Notice that the number of dots is thinned out. Again, that's because now we're looking primarily at TAFs. We're gonna keep moving the timeline forward. So maybe make it five o'clock tomorrow morning. And it changes. It looks like uh, California has particularly bad weather, it looks like. If we move that to eight o'clock in the morning, colors change, and so on, okay? Looks like, oh, so it looks like at about noon tomorrow, we have some bad weather up here in Seattle. So I'm looking here at the uh, northwest of the country, and there's a lot of red dots around I-5, uh, the freeway that runs from uh, Canada down to Mexico, okay? So by being able to vary the timeline, and in some cases the altitude slider, you can see what the weather really looks like. Now that by itself is pretty darn cool. And there's no other flight planner that I can think of that can do that. But we're not done yet. To me, though, the great feature really about Flight Q Online's four-dimensional weather is the ability not just to see how weather changes over time, but actually how that impacts our flight, our go, no-go decision, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at this. Right now, I've loaded on uh, the flight plan from Chicago to Boston. And I've taken a look at just turning on one map layer, essentially the METAR layer, because all I really care about is am I going to be looking at IFR conditions or VFR conditions? I'm a VFR pilot. So that's all I really want to see on the screen and I want to keep it simple. If you take a look at the timeline, it looks like this flight begins at about 12.30 today and runs till about seven o'clock. So what I, uh, the first thing that's striking my mind, of course, is around the time of my takeoff in Chicago, it's all red dots, all IFR conditions. Well, that doesn't look too good. Let's see how it goes maybe a little later in the flight, perhaps it'll look a little better. So I'll move the timeline to maybe 2.30 or so. At 2.30, I'm about, uh, hmm, yeah, looks like still an awful lot of IFR conditions. Maybe at 5 o'clock, where I'm almost done with a flight over here, starting to look better. It looks like the weather is better in Massachusetts than it is in the Chicago area. Nonetheless, uh, I've got to fly through an awful lot of IMZ to get there. Well, all right. Maybe this isn't the right time to fly. So this is where it comes in really handy. I'm going to take my timeline now and move it to something like maybe seven o'clock in the morning. Now, that's kind of interesting. So if instead of taking a flight today around noon, if I wait until seven o'clock in the morning tomorrow, take a look at the weather conditions in the Chicago area. 
they've, went for, they've gone from IFR to VFR. And looking across here, maybe make it 8.30 on the timeline. Still VFR conditions for the most part. Make it after 9 o'clock. Looks like we're still looking at VFR conditions. So to me, what this just showed me is that using the timeline and the four-dimensional weather in the product seems to me that the best way of taking the flight this afternoon is not to take the flight this afternoon, but to take the flight tomorrow morning. That is the big benefit of this. Now, there's more weather features in the product as well. So let's take a look at that. In fact, if you take a look, um, there's an entire tab devoted to weather at the top of the screen on the left-hand side. So I'm going to tap on that. This will give me access to Canadian and U.S. weather graphics, about 200, 300 of them, something like that. So let's click on those to see what we have. I click on the U.S., I see air mets and sig mets, freezing levels, icing. Let's take a look at icing. I can look at my icing from 3,000 feet, icing from 5,000 feet, 9,000 feet, 11,000 feet. Okay, so lots of different ways to look at this. I click the back button on the left side and I go back, click it again. If I were flying to Canada, I can look at that. I can also switch my tab from the gallery view, which we're looking at now, to the nearby view. The nearby view shows me TAFs and METARs from where I am right now or from any other airport. So right now we're fairly close to Payne Field in Seattle, so that's KPA, but it's showing me METARs from Payne, from BFI, which is Boeing Field, RNT and Renton, and so on. So I see a whole selection of, v, of uh, METARs on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side of this, I see all my TAFs from the area. So in one view, I get a really good view of all the different TAFs and METARs uh, that are near me. If I keep scrolling down, there's a lot of TAFs here, TAFs are big, I also see my winds aloft in the area. And I can do that for an airport too. For example, let me go back to, oh, let's just type this in on the top. We're flying into Boston, so let me type Boston at the top. I can immediately jump using this weather icon right here. I can immediately jump to the weather in Boston Logan's airport. So I'm going to tap on that. And you see it pulls up the information about Boston, then immediately goes to the weather tab. I know the current temperature is 46 degrees. I see my local, my regional, and my national radar. I see the, the uh, TAFs and the METARs from Boston alone, and so on. Okay, so a very quick, very easy way to look at textual graphics or local graphics, like this regional graphic, or even this local one right here, just from the Boston area. Very easy way to get to it. From any airport tab, you can hit the weather sub-tab and see all the weather, including, by the way, the seven-day forecast. You can see all the weather that is uh, current in that area or expected to be in that area very, very quickly. So you have uh, weather on the map. Let me just flip back to the map here. You have weather on the map. You have weather in text form in terms of METARs, TAFs, and winds aloft, and you have a gigantic gallery of weather graphics. All of this is available at your fingertips with just a couple of clicks in FlyQ Online.